please discuss the background for this study. Sure. So um, a background of this study actually led to two former studies that were published in JAMA Surgery, where we actually uh, compared costs and survival outcomes of radical cystectomy versus trimodal therapy for muscle invasive bladder cancer using SEER Medicare data. And one thing that we did notice uh, was the substantial costs associated with either treatment, but particularly with radical cystectomy. And what we did not compare this to was a surgical alternative or comparator, if you will. And this was actually proposed by our radiation oncologist uh, that works with me and wanted to better understand you know, the comparison of radical cystectomy versus another surgical therapy. And granted, partial cystectomy is uh, primarily used for a, a select cohort of patients. We wanted to mainly describe the costs that are associated with either treatment with our underlying hypothesis uh, that there would be uh, some difference between these two treatments uh, with lending more costs uh, with uh, radical cystectomy. What were some of the notable findings and were any of them surprising to you or your co-authors? Well, I think first off, uh, the uh, costs between radical cystectomy versus partial cystectomy, there was no significant difference up to a year out. However, uh, there are increased costs that are associated with radical cystectomy, but this was not significantly different. As we would expect, uh, survival outcomes are improved, uh, particularly cancer-specific survival with radical cystectomy. And while we use inverse probability treatment-weighted analyses, you know, this does not, it's an attempt to control for potential confounders, but there are obvious selection bias. And moreover, the number of patients. We had a larger number of radical cystectomy uh, versus partial cystectomy patients. Do you and your co-authors plan to conduct further research on this topic? And if so, what would its focus be? That's an excellent question. I, I think our group uh, is always uh, looking toward the cost comparison analyses. Uh, one area that we are currently addressing, um, as you can imagine, the substantial costs associated with pharmacotherapy, which in all three studies that we have published have noted that, and it's not a big surprise, particularly in the United States or even worldwide. So, um, and given the recent NICE criteria in the UK and not approving uh, newer agents such as immunotherapy for bladder cancer, that's one area of, of, of interest that my group has. And we have a um, you know, manuscript currently in submission. I can't elicit anything further, but uh, we're, we're constantly trying to drive, and particularly as in the title of this paper, is understanding high value care. Uh, because given our, our pressing economic situation worldwide, we have to be uh, cognizant when particularly we're dealing with potentially substantial uh, um, and costly uh, therapies. In your opinion, could the study findings serve as a deciding factor for a surgeon weighing radical or partial cystectomy? Well, I think it's going to lend towards itself when you have one or the other and from a healthcare system and moving into bundled payments. I think we're gonna definitely have to be uh, considered, considering the cost of treatments, but also considering you know, when you're comparing a patient that can uh, have equivalent you know, either or procedure, just making sure you're selecting the correct patient and performing the correct procedure. This is a population-based study. I think centers of excellence are very, use uh, partial cystectomy very judiciously. And I think when it is performed in the correct setting, it could yield not only a cost-effective option, uh, but also to the uh, survival benefit. What's the take-home message for the practicing urologist? For uh, the practicing urologist, I think follow, following the guideline recommendations, I think are instrumental. 
Uh, there are substantial costs associated with bladder cancer therapy in itself. We're investigating the non-muscle invasive uh, uh, disease state as well. And I think we have to be cognizant of the costs that are associated with treatments, optimizing care, particularly with bladder cancer in the UK, for instance, has moved towards a centralized system, which it has improved their outcomes of bladder cancer patients. Costs, interestingly enough, have not been uh, interrogated uh, as much as we are, are doing in the United States. Uh, but even this in the United States, it isn't only until recently that we've actually investigated this. So I think the biggest take home is do the right thing for the right patient. And whether that means uh, performing either surgery in, in uh, one's hands or more importantly, referring to a center of excellence that can then manage these patients, I think is uh, you know, paramount. Is there anything else that you feel our audience should know about the study findings? I think uh, further studies investigating not only the oncologic outcomes, but marrying the costs that are associated with treatments, but also looking into other areas. We also look into mental health, as one can imagine, uh, having a cancer diagnosis and undergoing, you know, uh, potentially invasive procedures such as radical cystectomy. But even in itself, uh, radiotherapy with chemotherapy are not benign you know, treatments and being uh, treating and managing the patient holistically, but really taking into account uh, the costs that are associated with therapies so that we really can optimize and deliver high value care.